Should you always feel happy? This is the question that we started with and that the group voted on for our 125th discussion in Bangkok, Thailand. I was facilitating a group of about 18 people, strangers and friends, sitting in a circle of chairs in a small room. There were a lot of opinions, and that question, should you always feel happy? But there's one opinion that has stuck with me up until today. A young Thai lady who had joined for the first time spoke up. She wasn't fluent in English, but she really had something to say. And she had tears in her eyes when she said, I don't always feel happy. I've struggled with depression my entire life. And there's been times when I thought the world might be a better place without me. And I've tried to end it a few times. I want to tell my parents and boyfriend how I feel, but I can't. They don't want to listen. Looking around at the group, I saw everyone leaning in, giving her encouragement, giving her smiles, making eye contact with her. I facilitated over 900 of these discussions, but these moments of unexpected power, bravery, and honesty, they still surprise me. Not only that the young lady might be sharing her feelings of depression for the very first time, but what was it that made her feel comfortable enough to share something so personal in front of a group of people that were strangers just 30 minutes before. I think it's because of the environment of empathy that we look to create throughout our discussions over the past 14 years. I think it's because she felt listened to. When she looked around, she saw people have shared her feelings. And that creates an environment where she can be herself without fear. It also highlights something that I have found to be very true that facilitated discussions are one of the best ways to create empathy. You might be wondering how we set up these discussions that matter. So I'll tell you. We sit in a circle of chairs, set them up so that everyone can see each other, and once everyone gets settled down, this is how we start. Welcome. This is a free and brave space for you to share your ideas and your thoughts to be who you want to be and open your mind to new ideas. There are a few ground rules. First, as the facilitator, I'm only going to ask questions and not share my opinion. This isn't about me, this is all about you. Second, there are no right or wrong answers. I only ask that you share your opinions with respect. And third, please stay with us at this discussion for the next hour without electronics. Please turn off your smartphones, laptops, Game Boys, beepers, and if you have them, fax machines. Be here with humans and without technology. Also, this isn't a rule, but just a warning. We're going to start with a question, and we most likely will end with even more questions. Simple, right? After that, we pass out these cards and people write down any question they want on the back. Open-ended questions, ones that aren't easy to answer with a yes or a no. I want to share with you a few of the questions we've had over the past year. What's the difference between a boss and a leader? Is there a God? And this one is a really tough one. Can men and women ever just be friends? I'm not sure if we'll ever find out the answer, but we dive deep into these discussions and we make sure that everyone has the chance to share. Discussions that matter are challenging and it's normal to have strong opinions and even stronger disagreements. Take John, one of our regulars. He really, really, really does not like guns. And the question we started with, should guns be legal? There are a few first ideas, and then John shared his true feelings. He thought gun owners are uneducated and that guns 
caused much more harm than anything else. He didn't know it, but right across from him was Adam, a professor and father who defended his family against a violent attack just last month with, you might have already guessed it, a gun. I could tell looking at the group that people were feeling uncomfortable from the body language. As a facilitator, I was watching this unfold right in front of me. These two men with very different views on the issue. So I asked what I asked throughout most of these sessions. Does anyone agree or disagree? I opened the door for sharing to happen. I really didn't know what was gonna, what was gonna happen next. And then Adam, the professor, asked his own question. What would you do if you were walking back to your car with your wife and daughter and men came to rob you? What would you do? John's idea, throw the money and run. Adam said, well, it happened to me and I wasn't sure if they just wanted the money or if they wanted the car too. And I wasn't sure if we could outrun them. But I had my firearm, I threatened them that I would use it, and that's how I and my family got away without more trouble. John had to come to terms with the fact that this gun owner was educated, was intelligent, and it seemed like the gun really did help. He had to deal with what psychologists would call cognitive dissonance, when your opinion is met with information that challenges it. He had to respect that firsthand experience that he heard, and not just what he saw on the news. Don't get me wrong, John still disagreed with owning a gun. There were all sides of the issue, and all opinions, but everyone got a chance to have a little bit of viewpoint diversity and see the other side. And these moments, when two people who strongly disagree have a healthy avenue to have a discussion that matters, this doesn't happen online or in books. It only happens during well-facilitated face-to-face discussions. We currently have discussions that matter in five countries with 100 volunteer facilitators made up of 30 nationalities. We've had discussions with over 10,000 people from topics ranging from food to tough ones like religion. And I'm proud to say not one punch has been thrown and no one has ever been kicked out of one of our discussions. I think it's because people know they're being listened to. As a facilitator, like it says on my shirt, I'm a catalyst. I'm a process expert. I'm designing the best possible process to lead to the best possible outcomes for the group as a whole. I'm becoming invisible. I'm asking powerful questions. I'm not teaching or preaching. The discussion on guns had my heart pumping too. I had all my own ideas running through my head. But as a facilitator, it's my job to ask the next question, to be an observer, to see what the group is saying, and always I try to give the majority a glimpse of the minority opinion. So when everyone thinks guns are great, I'm gonna ask a question that shows them the other side, and vice versa. As a facilitator, I'm also looking to see who in the group wants to speak up. People leaning forward, maybe with their hand over their mouth. This lets me know it's time to ask any other ideas and use my own body language to encourage them and give them a smile. I'm also aware of people who need to speak a little bit less and listen a little bit more. For talkative people, I'm helping them pace themselves, understand there's others in the group, and know what healthy dialogues are made of. It's highly effective. People are less defensive, they put their guards down, and they open up. As facilitators, we pave the way to let people know that they can throw their ideas in, let them get pushed and pulled around, and challenged. You know, opinions don't always have to be taken personally. I say this because my father's from Iran and my mother's an American who is raised Jewish. I saw growing up that there are complete differences all around the world. 
And I've seen tension as cultures come together and clash. But I've also seen that with understanding, love is built. When I was about five years old, my Iranian grandparents came to live with us in our home in the U.S. We didn't speak the same language, but I wanted to have a conversation with them. I wanted to learn from them. I loved them. I just needed to find a way to hear them. So we took hours using our smiles, our hands, and we all did our best to communicate and to listen. And this has been one of my greatest lessons in practicing empathy. I've taken that feeling with me throughout my life, my young curiosity for learning about people and cultures. And as I got older, I realized it wasn't just my grandparents that needed to be given voice. It was people that were stereotyped, overlooked, put into boxes, or misrepresented. That is one of the driving forces why, for the past 14 years, every week, on every continent I found myself on, I've done everything I could to create a free, brave, and safe space for people to have discussions that matter. It's always been my hope that people see that we're much more united than divided. The format I use is called Aristotle's Cafe. No, it's not a coffee shop. It's a format, it's a framework, a tool that you can use anytime you have people to sit and share their ideas. It's a place to confront prejudice, uncover assumptions, and build community. You know, we have all these conflicts in the world all around us. In the US, it's Democrat and Republicans. In other places, it's war zones, a fight for resources, religion. At the core of all these conflicts is a lack of communication and empathy. We have all this information coming at us from all sides now, faster than ever, and all these conflicts. And in a world that's more connected than we've ever been, we're becoming more polarized and more isolated. And we're simply not talking anymore. I'd like for you, just for a moment, to think about the people that you love and the people that you interact with every day. Think about the last disagreement, the last time you were on opposite sides of an idea. Are you taking those moments as opportunities to build understanding, or are you running away from them? If you ask me, about what empathy is. Empathy is a muscle. You have to use it to build it. You have to practice it to build it. You might want to become a facilitator with Aristotle's Cafe, or you might want to join one of our discussions. But no matter what, I encourage you, just like that young Thai woman from the beginning who wasn't always happy, be honest, be brave, just like John and Adam on guns. Share your opinion if you feel strongly, but be ready to hear the opposite side too. And I encourage you to take their lead and to take this philosophy with you. Start practicing empathy and start having more discussions that matter. Thank you.